Ember Lab's debut title, Kana Bridge of Spirits, is finally out on PlayStation 5 and PC. Now, of course, we all know about this game because it's got this amazing art style that looks like it's ripped out of a Pixar movie. But I found that the game was so much more than that. The gameplay was challenging, the exploring felt limitless, and all in all, I just felt like this was one of the best games of 2021. I'm Matt Move the Joystick, and this is my review of Kana Bridge of Spirits. Now before we get too deep into the review, I do want to tell you that all the footage that you're going to see in this review is from early on in the game. Uh, I wanted to avoid any potential spoilers, so I kept it more to the beginning of the game. You're going to see some gameplay from like maybe the middle parts, but there shouldn't be anything that will will spoil your experience with Kane and Bridge of Spirits because this is one of those games that you really want to experience for yourself. Also, I'll tell you that this game that I played was on the PlayStation 5. I did not play the PC version of the game. So without further ado, let's talk about Kane and Bridge of Spirits. Now, the story of Kane and Bridge of Spirits follows a young spirit guide on her way to a mountain shrine. Now, on that journey, she finds a village that is completely filled with corruption and a bunch of lost spirits. So she takes the time to stop and clear that corruption with the help of the rot. Now, the rot are these cute little forest creatures. Now, they, they do pack a punch, though, using both Kana's power and the power of nature. They're both able to eradicate the corruption and also find the memories of all the lost souls that have been corrupted and have forgotten who they are. Going into Kana Bridge of Spirits, I had so many hopes. It was one of my most anticipated games of 2021, especially since the moment it was announced. But I didn't expect the game to have so many dark and foreboding moments. But it also balanced it out well with very much light and uplifting moments. Because this game overall is a story about healing and acceptance and finding closure. It's just very beautiful in that aspect. And beautiful is such a key word for this game because, I mean, everybody looks at the art style, the Pixar style animation that you have in this game, and you just immediately think, oh man, that's just absolutely beautiful. But it's it's more than just that. It's beautiful in its story as well. I, I absolutely love and adore this game for that aspect. And one of the big reasons that I adore this game as well has to do with the characters. Kane of Bridge of Spirits has some amazing characters development and character work and I think it's led by the main character Kana. She is just such this fearless yet calming presence throughout the game and she's such a strong character in her devotion and also in her spirit and her abilities as well. And I also find it really cool that Kana is being voiced by a person of Bali and Japanese descent in Ayu Larasanti, who is a brand new name in the voice acting world, um, because this game was inspired by those two cultures. So the fact that they are having that representation with someone like uh, Larasanti, and I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, is just, it's really cool and, and very meaningful. And as an added anecdote, she's also the daughter of the leaders of the Balinese musical ensemble that I am totally going to butcher the name, Gamalan Kudamani, who they also collaborated with Amber Labs on the game's just absolutely mind-blowing soundtrack. But along with Kana, the, the stars of the show are also The Rot. The Rot are just so freaking adorable, but they are also just so freaking powerful. And you see this collaboration between the two. There's like this symbiotic relationship where they help one another. I mean, you will have many different activities and events where you need the help of the rot to uh, maybe carry something, kind of like Pikmin style, to complete a puzzle or solve challenges. The rot are just more than just cute and just handy to use. They're honestly just a very integral part of the overall combat of Kana Bridge of Spirits. Um, we'll talk more about it later, but they're able to deliver these insanely powerful blows that help you get out of a lot of situations. Also, you know, and as an added benefit of their cuteness, they have these like cute little hats that you can put on them as you find them throughout the game. 
But really, though, the rot are, are just the best. Like, every good Pixar movie, any good, like, DreamWorks animation movie, they need, like, a cute sidekick, a cute buddy, and the rot is that for Cana Bridge of Spirits, and couldn't get enough of them. They're absolutely adorable. Now, once again, I talked before about how they are such an integral part of combat, so let's talk about the combat mechanics of Cana Bridge of Spirits. I really didn't expect the combat of Cana Bridge of Spirits to be so challenging. Now, it's, it's pretty straightforward gameplay. It's like hack and slash, use whatever abilities you can at that time, but also you have to build up actions for the rot to help you and the rot can help you by binding an enemy or they can help you by like giving you health but there are very few instances where you can get health another thing too is timing you have to time out your shield properly otherwise you can get destroyed pretty easily now there is an upgrade system that's pretty great um, it allows you to use the rot more so throughout uh, your your gaming situations um, you know you can use the rot to create a powerful hammer you can use the rot to uh, create a really like charged up bow shot or you can even use the rot to uh, you know, make a bomb that slows down anybody that was in that vicinity so there's a lot of really fun gameplay and a lot of verticality too especially with the use of a bow and it, it's just it's really more fun than I think you think Cana Bridge of Spirits' combat would be. We've talked about how the story is fantastic. We've talked about how the gameplay is just really fun and challenging and, and addicting to a certain extent. But one of the best parts of Cana Bridge of Spirits is the exploration. Now, this game is very much so a, a very linear story. It's a very linear game. But it's it feels endless in the amount of exploration that you can do in this game and what i love too is that ember labs they they made it to where you are rewarded for exploration you're rewarded through finding more rot you're rewarded through uh finding these little spirit mails that give you that help the village out even more in getting rid of the, the corruption but you're also rewarded with different uh, with the currency the in-game currency that you get the materials the karma that you use to upgrade different abilities and also for um getting in-game currency to buy little hats the crystals that you're able to buy in the game so the exploration is just absolutely limitless and there are puzzles throughout every single aspect of the game like everywhere you go you will find a different puzzle um so for that i really love that aspect of Kana bridge of spirits and i i think i found myself very much lost at times throughout the game and, and immersed in this very vibrant and beautiful world um usually whenever you do a review you're you're really needing to get to like the meat and potatoes of it you know find out the story try to finish the game as fast as possible so you can do the review but for me I found myself just being completely en entranced by the world and everything around it that at times I was like, oh, that's right, I gotta get back to the story. So it was, uh, it's it's just such a beautiful, beautiful game, a beautiful experience um, that really I think everyone should play and should explore everything about this game. Moving on now to the in-game currency that I mentioned a little bit before during the exploration part. Um, there are two forms of currency. There is karma, where you use to upgrade, and there are these crystals that you use to buy hats. Now, one of my main issues with the game is that there is a plethora of, of these crystals that you can use to buy these hats. But the hats don't really do anything. They're just very much cosmetic. So there's not a huge reward for getting these hats, and there's not a huge reward for getting these crystals. So I kind of wish that there was something else that you could use these crystals to buy, but unfortunately there isn't. And one more weird thing that I noticed about Cana Bridge of Spirits is that whenever you find different hats, you also have to then purchase that hat for the, the rot. 
So, I thought there you would at least get one free one because you found it in a chest, but really you just you would just unlock it and then you have to go buy it later. So, uh, I didn't really like that aspect. I feel like if you find it, you should be able to use it automatically and then go purchase more if you like, but that was my main issue. It's very small. It's a very cosmetic issue, but that was one of my main issues with the game. Overall, I had such high expectations for Kano Bridge of Spirits, and I'm so happy to say that Ember Lab completely exceeded all expectations. Now, obviously, the game looks amazing. It looks just like you're playing a Pixar movie. Um, and, and really, it could have been a Pixar movie. If you really look at it, it really has all the makings of a great one. But I'm so thankful that it wasn't. I'm thankful that it was a game, because I feel like this this story needed as much time as a game can provide. But even more than that, it was just a very fun and interactive experience with all of the, the combat mechanics, the exploration. I mean, you feel, I just felt fulfilled throughout my time playing Kena Bridge of Spirits. And, and you just, you never would have guessed that this was Ember Lab's first game. Like, that, that also is another thing that is just completely insane. That this is their very first game, and they did this with their first time trying. And that is, hey, hats off. Completely mind-blowing that they were able to pull this off, and it's, it's just so cool. Kena Bridge of Spirits is one of my absolute favorite games of 2021, and it's one that I think you must play and you must own if you have a PlayStation 5 or a PC. I said it over and over again earlier on in my review, and it's just, I, I can't get over how great of a game this is that I really wish that everybody would play Kena Bridge of Spirits. So that's it. That is our review. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave a comment. Also, like, share, subscribe. Let us know what you think about Kana Bridge of Spirits. I'm Matt Move the Joystick. Once again, thank you so much for watching.